This is a demonstration of the calibration of some rubber time-dependent test data. Um, and while I say it's test data, I want to very quickly say that it's fake data or pseudo data or simply synthetic data. That is, I created this data and I created this data from a very realistic rubber model. So I had some rubber test data and I fit this hyperelastic Yo model, Prony series linear viscoelastic material model, and using some unit cubes in Abacus, I created a series of synthetic test data um, simply because I didn't have all the test data and I wanted this breadth of test data to show in this example. So the, the title says elastomer pseudodata or synthetic data. I'm showing here, I've already imported all the test data, so I'm not really going to go back and show the data import. We've shown that in other videos. I've imported time domain data. These three here are simple um, uniaxial tensile monotonic pull tests at three different rates, a, a slow rate, a mid rate, and a fast rate. The information in this window is stress relaxation data. And in the legend, it, what it stands for is STSR stands for simple tension stress relaxation. That is, it's uniaxial in nature. And the 100 means um, I, the, the pull test was out to 100% strain and then hold. And we could see that if we just changed our plot temporarily to a time and versus strain. So these are the strains that were imposed on the unit cube that generated this data. And then this particular data is uh, load unload cyclic data with a triangular wave pattern. So again, we could switch from uh, stress strain to say time stress or time strain. So the unit cube that generated this data had an imposed time strain history that looked like this. And we'll switch back to stress and strain. So we can generate as many of these um, plots as we want. We use this create plot uh, icon down here in the bottom to create a plot. And I can pull in, import as many pieces of test data as I want. And in this case, I've, I've actually imported seven different uh, pieces of test data. All the test data is shown down here. There is, so I can import as many pieces of test data as I want. Um, I can create as many um, windows with display or chart windows um, or XY plot windows as I want. Um, a, another couple of things I want to point out is um, during import, we have the idea that you can import pretty much any kind of test data that you want. Stress relaxation, creep, um, monotonic pull test, um, and even some uh, cyclic, uh, basically you're bringing in any time, strain, stress, history as your test data. The other thing I wanted to show you is that in the latest version, I am, um, I am using today's latest cloud version to do this demo, and I wanted to show you that you can bring, frankly, you can bring in frequency domain data as well, and you can, and it can either be um, uniaxial, that is, E prime, E double prime, or torsional or she slash shear, that would be G and G double prime, DMA, uh, storage and loss, modulus, and tan delta data. So you could bring in that sort of data. I don't happen to have that kind of data um, in my synthetic set of data here. One thing that in the other videos that we've created so far, we haven't talked a whole lot about is this icon right here. Um, you'll notice when I pause my mouse over it, it says range response data. We also tend to call this uh, response only data. So it's not test data. And um, for instance, um, and I'll just bring this up. We, we have by default a, a very compact little GUI here that allows you to create deformation patterns that you'd like to see a response to. 
Okay. For instance, let's say I had uniaxial data, but I didn't have any biaxial data, and I wanted to see the response of my math model in biaxial deformations. I could do that here because I am allowed to specify what the deformation is. In, in this particular case, you can also, so I can create all sorts of different deformation patterns to which I'm going to see the math model response. Um, and you'd be surprised how many times this is a very handy feature. In, in, in this, uh, you can tell it to include unloading or not include the loading. You can describe the strain rate either with the, uh, the time dependency with the strain rate or time ranges. Um, you uh, can specify the strain range. You can say single curve or family of curves. So you can do things like a family of strain rate curves which would be sort of similar to what we have in this plot out here. In this particular case, I'm actually going to create some RO, or response-only data, in the frequency domain. I'm going to call it, notice how we put the little RO by default. I'm going to put DMA. Um, and I could put DMA RO, but um, so basically in this I'm, but I don't have any DMA test data, but I would like to see the storage and loss modulus response of the math model that I end up creating. So um, the start value would be uh, the starting frequency, and the peak value would be the end, uh, which 100. So we're going to go from a frequency in hertz of this to a end value um, in, to 100 hertz. We're going to do that with 100 points, and I'm going to say OK. The Again, this is all uh, synthetic data. It was created, remember, from a math model that was a Yo model and a five-term Prony series. So I'm in analytical mode. We've talked a little bit about analytical versus numerical mode. Anytime that your math model uh, that you desire, your target math model that you would desire to calibrate is in analytical mode, you ought to use it because it's um, very, very fast, very high performance. So we are going to select a hyperelastic viscoelastic or hyperelastic prony series model and say OK. And it will populate that over here. Um, I'm going to use a little bit, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, notice that even the pre-populated information, that's all, all of this pre-populated um, parameters are set based on some, that's not really calculated from the data per se. The, for instance, this 0.5 megapascal value is just something that most, that's reasonable for most elastomers, um, most rubbery materials. Um, and we do uh, we we do something fairly nice that we do have some heuristics that looks at how much time span is in the data to figure out a decent guess at how many prony series one might use. I could sit here and fit to these um, to a Neohookian model with six parameters, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to say I know uh, a Yo model was used to create this synthetic data, and I know a prony series of five terms was used. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and fit I'm going to in a moment I'm going to hit my left mouse button and, and you'll notice my solution is relatively close um, as is and if I hit calibrate it will take less than a second to get this answer. And like I said I know the original um, the, the, the material model that, that this synthetic data was created from, and we can we can see that we, we know, quote, the right answer. There is a right answer, and our calibration, in fact, achieved that right answer very, very nicely. And you can see by all the, the error norms, the R-squared error norms are all um, identically one to many, many decimal points. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you here was that I had... Um, I'm going to create one more plot, and in that plot, I'm going to plot the, the um, storage and loss modulus, the DMA data. So here's the DMA data, um, and I can maybe make the, um, the storage modulus blue. 
So if, for instance, um, if you knew something about your um, about the approximate um, storage or loss modulus that this class of materials has, you, you could plot this and, and maybe have a sanity check against whether that makes sense for the class of materials that you're, you're, that you're dealing with. So this is an example here of showing that response only data and we can, and we can do this in the time domain as well. Um, if we didn't have stress relaxation data we could plot uh, response only stress relaxation, response only uh, cyclic, response only family of rate curves, etc. So I, th I think I'll, I'll end that here. We've touched on a few new ideas about the calibration app, and we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. Thank you.